here? Brother Andrew, are you here? Having a wonderful day so far? Praise the Lord. Yes, we are. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. The bridegroom has waited long for his bride to dress. He has suffered for a wrong, this we must confess. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Give God praise, rejoice, be happy, church below and church above. For his wife at last is ready, free from sinning by his love. All are red in God's rights, linen clean and white. All are clad in garments bright, glorious in his sight. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be.
Thank you, Brother Messiah. Wonderful Sabbath day to everyone. We thank God for the day thus far. We are back in our camp book, and last night we got to page 136, and it follows on providentially from what we were discussing there in Elder Leacock session. You see the section beginning, our minds must be fortified with the truth. That is where we are at page 136 in chapter 14. So when you get it, mark it and focus, and then we will proceed to finish off this chapter in this session. God bless everyone. If you are settled, let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we go into this session now, we ask in the name of Jesus for your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. We know that Jesus told us we should know the truth and the truth will set us free. And also that if we know the Son and have the Son, the Son will set us free because the Son is the way, the truth, and the life. Bless us in our study now in Jesus' name. Amen. So everybody knows where we are in our camp book, page 136. Under the section, our minds must be fortified with the truth, following on from the first presentation for the morning. So let's go. Let's read it together. Those who endeavor to obey all the commandments of God will be opposed and derided. They can stand only in God. In order to endure the trial before them, they must understand the will of God as revealed in his word. They can honor him only as they have a right conception of his character. Watch that. Only as they have what? If you have the wrong concept of God's character, you will collapse in the final crisis. Only as they have a right conception of his character, government, and purposes, and act in accordance with them. Now let's read this one clearly now. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible, will stand through the last great conflict. Amen. And you just heard how to fortify. You have to keep going over and consolidating and reading and studying. Okay? You have to keep going over and over. The, Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved. When you're doing sciences and those subjects, you can't read the text but once. You gotta keep going over. Some people grasp more quickly than others. And I had a teacher who used to tell us, if this boy in the corner can read the book once and get a hundred percent, and you have to read it twenty times to get a hundred percent, read it twenty times. Because the examiner in Cambridge don't know how many times you read it. Same hundred percent. Okay? But it's thirty talents, forty talents, sixty talents, hundred talent people. But whatever talents you have, you can maximize. So study to show yourself approved. I just want you to notice the opening parts of this paragraph. Those who endeavor to obey all the commandments of God will be opposed and derided. Now all through the history of God's work, the people of God have been opposed, derided, and persecuted by who? Another set calling themselves people of God. When Jesus was on the earth, he and his disciples were persecuted by who? The Jews who claimed to be the only and true people of God. In the Dark Ages, the Reformers were persecuted by who? The Roman Catholic Church that claimed to be the only church of God, burning people alive on a stake. All through history, as A.T. John says, the religious wicked are the most wicked on the earth. Next paragraph now. Let's read this too. If you would, the paragraph on the day, yeah. If you would stand through the, let's go. If you would stand through the time of trouble, you must know Christ and appropriate the gift of his righteousness, which he imputes to the repentant sinner. The word appropriate means make it your own. Make it your own. Now, 
The, let me just read this little paragraph for you from uh, Testimonies, Volume 5. Testimonies, Volume 5, uh, to show you something. Listen carefully. Listen carefully to this. Whenever I read it, it frightens me to go and study harder. Listen to this. Testimonies, Volume 5, page 707, paragraph 2. 5T. I have been shown that many who profess to have a knowledge of present truth know not what they believe. Well, well, well. 5T707, paragraph 1 and 2 and 3, the whole section. Okay? So it means most of the people in churches, whichever church it is, don't know what they believe. I want sir, a young lady who goes to a particular church arguing about the secret rapture and saying that there will be a secret rapture. And I said, does your church believe in a secret rapture? She didn't know what her church teaches, but she was a member of the church. Her church does not teach a secret rapture, but she was believing in a secret rapture and teaching it. I decently tell her I can report it to your pastor because you know what you believe. But there's what, there's what we're being told here. I have been shown that many who profess to have a knowledge of present truth know what? Not what they believe. They do not understand the evidences of their faith. They have no just appreciation of the work for the present time. When the time of trial shall come, there are men now preaching to others who will find upon examining the positions they hold that there are many things for which they can give no satisfactory reason. Pause. Let's begin a little distraction here with the... Uh, Putting up the umbrella. So we're going to go over that in a minute. It is a serious thing we have to apply to ourselves. When you look out this morning, when you got up, the sky was so clear. Who would have thought it would be rain at this time? You know, in all things, we have, have to give thanks. I put up my towel to dry this morning. So that's all over. <laughs> huh? Yeah, everything good. Said, I, can't, I can't wash my towel on the Sabbath for the Lord washing it. But he don't break the Sabbath. Let's go. Everybody settle back now? Just a slip paragraph on it uh, before we go back to the camp book. So listen to this quotation again. This applies to all of us. There are men now preaching to others who will find upon examining the positions they hold that there are many things for which they can give no satisfactory answer. And there are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe, but until controversy arises, they do not know their own weakness. I'll just pause there. Of course, some people get upset when controversy arises. Some people. But that very controversy shows them that they don't know what to believe and what they believe. All right, so that's important. We get back here now to our camp book. Camp book. We now come to another important section called the health reform message. The health reform message. Now, we live in a day where the chronic non-communicable diseases are rampant. In the 40s and 50s and 60s, that age group, people are dropping down dead suddenly and younger. Breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer in young people, young people. Premature deaths. Yeah. 
Let's go now. Now the health message has been given to facilitate the advanced sanctification that the end time remnant must have in order to be victorious in the final crisis and to be prepared for translation. You following? Are you listening to the rain? Okay. Listen to this little quotation. On December 10, 1871, I was again shown that the health reform is one branch of the great work, which is to fit a people for the coming of the Lord. It is as closely connected with the third angel's message as the hand is with the body. Now, what do we mean by health reform message? When God first made Adam, when God first made Adam and told him what to eat, did he send him to McDonald's, Shafet, Kentucky, a restaurant? He gave him all the fruits of the trees to eat. And now science is telling us that a plant-based diet is the best diet to prevent these modern diseases that are killing people in the prime of their life, age 40, 50, and 60, and they're gone. But in Barbados, we have a lot of monkeys, okay? And the monkeys go from tree to tree, eating what they don't plant. But that be, that, that's all right. The Lord said he can feed all of them. The Lord promised to feed every monkey and every bird. So when the birds come and eat the, what is left of your dog food, they are claiming the promise of God. God promised to feed them. That's new covenant faith. They're more faith than us. The Bible says the Lord feeds these animals every morning. The animals get up and move and look for food. They cooperate with the promise. So the monkeys jump from tree to tree as exercise. They pick the mangoes. They pick everything. I don't see one of them in the hospital or in the clinic. They live to the maximum lifespan of 25 years. And they have a little service for the monkeys. Bury the dead, you know. And, and they school. Yeah, monkeys and those mammals bury the dead. They don't leave them knocking about. And we look at these animals, we claim we have more sense. And mankind eats more rubbish. More nonsense. And the Lord has given us, as Brother Saul was just explaining, frontal lobes that are amazing. But God's end time people will go back to Genesis and eat the diet given to Adam. The fruits. And add, in, add it to that after the flood, the nuts, the grains, the herbs. Okay? Take a herb like turmeric. Turmeric contains wonderful anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer properties. Places like Trinidad and St. Lucia, I always say nobody should be sick because Trinidad and St. Lucia has more land than Barbados. You have volcanic soil. You grow more fruits and herbs. All the coconuts, all the, pine all the pineapples, all the uh, uh, sour salt, all the watermelons, all the herbs. Guyana, you go to the market in Guyana, all the green stuff. And people forget all that. The Americans come down and set up their fast food places and they're going to eat rubbish. Talking about taste. Are you with me? So we have an epidemic of obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, all sorts of things in the, in the world. And that is why it is important to understand the health message. Exercise, adequate rest, Eat a plant-based diet, a plant-based diet. Be moderate with your salt. Don't worry with the sugar. Get enough sugar from the fruits and vegetables. You don't have to add. Okay? You don't have to add any sugar. When you make a herbal tea, you don't need any sugar. You don't need to drink all these uh, foolish beverages with all these fancy names, Buster and Coke and all them things. Show them in the sea. No, you don't show them in the sea because you hurt the fish. Show them in the pond. Health is very important not just to live longer but god must have an end time people whose bouton and chemical neurochemical transmitters function optimally because of how they nourish their brain to think clearly satan wants wants to put in his thoughts god wants to put in his thoughts and how healthy our brain is facilitate optimal mind or thinking function you just heard it Health message very important. Are you with me? The one on top, uh, some people get frightened for it. We don't have to, this is the same thing we're saying. On top of page 137. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord 
Among those who are what? So if you're not waiting for the coming of the Lord, this test doesn't apply to you. Okay? Me eating as animal flesh will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this view in end, in end at, sorry, and endeavor to work steadily towards it. When I was 25 years old, I decided to become a vegan. And I have not regretted it. So come October the 4th, that would be 50 years, I was a vegan. And I thank the Lord. So when I do a morning shit, I put all the leaves I find in it. I have to mix it without my wife watching because she, you know, my wife would say, every leaf in the yard you're putting in this, I said, drink some. I have to make it, you know, the ladies, one thing about ladies, ladies like sweet things. I suppose it's in harmony with their nature. They're sweet. You can't make something so healthy and it ain't tastes better. So, anyhow, ladies, use some of these green things. Don't worry about how much taste. He who eats only for taste will not have long to taste. <laughs> Let's go. Health message is important. On mornings, we have exercise. So I want to see more people. Can't, can't finish now. So I, I'm making this appeal late. Want to see more people? Like, when you go back home, exercise, walk, swim, very important. Exercise also facilitates those neurochemical transmitter actions. Exercise reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. Okay? So get up and walk. Okay, sister Young? I just want to, uh, uh, Brother Lee, call. I'm looking at somebody in the back and calling Sister Young. Sister Young, I don't know who you're talking to. I'm talking to Sister Young. Okay, so get up and walk, health reform. Don't forget that one plate of food can give you 2,000 calories, but you have to walk 35 miles to walk it off because that's how wonderfully we are made. We are very gasoline efficient. So you're putting gasoline over the plate of food, and you have to work it off a long time. That's how efficient we are. Good. That's enough on that, but that's important. Let me see the hands of those who walk when they, when they are home, who walk at least four days a week. You're in church. All right, we will continue to pray for the health before our message to take root. Let's go. Next session, pray for the latter rain. Pray for the latter rain. Let's go. The latter rain, ripening earth's harvest, represents the spiritual grace, follow carefully, represents the spiritual grace that prepares the church for the coming of the Son of Man. The latter rain. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. And the latter rain, according to Deuteronomy and the Hebrew, is a teacher of righteousness according to righteousness. And as A.T. Jones says, you do not know a truth if you do not practice it. You do not know a truth if you have not experienced it. Okay? And since Jesus says he's our husband, in the Bible, when the Bible says a husband knew his wife and they got a son, would that mean just uh, write down him on paper? He knew her. It was an experience. And so Jesus wants to know us so as to impregnate us with his character and we bear fruit to his glory. The latter rain, I remember the Holy Spirit is the personal representative of Jesus. Let's go on. In the middle of this paragraph, I hope you're following, but unless the former rain has fallen, unless the former rain has fallen, there will be no life. The green blade will not spring up. Unless the early showers have done their work, the latter rain can bring no seed to perfection. So you need the early and latter rain of the Holy Spirit, all through spiritual growth from conversion growing, studying, praying, and intimate knowledge of Jesus, it is a progressive work. Next paragraph, there's, let's read this together. This is Mark 4. There is to be first the blade. Let's start over. There is to be first. Let's start over. One, two, three. There is to be first the blade, then the ear, 
after that, the full corn in the ear. There must be a constant development of Christian virtue, a constant advancement in Christian experience. This we should seek with intensity of desire that we may adorn the doctrine of Christ our Savior. Next section, as we move on smoothly, Climbing Peter's Ladder. This was our camp book for 2016. Y'all have that camp book? 2016 camp book. We have to do over some of these and get them down to you. 2016 camp book. So this is just a, a synopsis. Listen to uh, Peter's Ladder. And we should know Peter's Ladder and we should be climbing it. Okay? Let's read this section now. Let's go. These words are full of instruction and strike the keynote of victory. The apostle presents before the believers the ladder of Christian perfection. The ladder of what? Every step of which represents continual advancement in the knowledge of God and in the climbing of which there is to be no standstill. You heard that? Let's go, let's go through the ladder now, the realms of the ladder. Let's read it. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, pause. Temperance is of great importance. Temperance is of great importance. The spread of prophecy says that most adults can do well on two meals a day or one. Oh dear. But the Douglas, you come in here talking. Children are growing so they can eat, but when you reach the age that you're not growing anymore, uh, listen, I had a patient and I told her that she needed to uh, go on one or two meals a day or one and a half. So she started to laugh. And I told her, you're a Christian, so go and study the story of Joseph in Egypt. She said, which part of the story? He said, you tell me. She started to laugh again. Good friend of mine, a patient. And she said, oh, you mean that there were seven years of plenty and Joseph stored up all the barns of grain and then there were seven years of famine. I say, yeah, and during the seven years of famine, he had enough to last seven years. She laughed and said, I get the message clear and I thank you very much. And she worked on it. She worked on it and a few years after he saw and she said, Dr. Dugnan, I thank you for that message. You gave me it straight from the Bible. I am a practicing Joseph. Having stored up for many years, I am now going smoothly on what was stored. Okay? Temperance. Temperance is self-control. So we tend to have message here with this. Self-control. Most people eat too much quantity of food and too little quality. A lot of starch, a lot of salt, a lot of sugar. You don't, you, don't, you don't see any antioxidants and phytonutrients. You find those in the leaves, the herbs, the fruits, and the vegetables. Okay? And Trinidadians have such, Trinidadians and St. Lucians have such a wealth for these things and Guyanese. There shouldn't be any sickness in those countries. Here in Trinidad, you have all the hills. St. Lucia, you have, have all the hills, all the mountains, rather. In Barbados, you only have a little hills. But you should make the most of your country. Trinidadians and St. Lucians and Guyanese should be healthy people. Lots of herbs and fruits and vegetables. We have to import some from you. Okay? All right, let's go. Let's continue with the ladder. Let's start over the ladder again. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, which is very important. Patience. Now, patience comes from the Greek word, hupo meno. Hupo mene. It means to stay under. Stay under who? You have to stay surrendered to God. Stay surrendered to God. You know, if you're under, there's always a temptation to come up. Well, in Trinidad, you all want to have this experience. Uh, when we are home in Barbados and we go into the sea, and we dive down as little boys, we see who can hold his breath under the water longest. Okay? So when the Trinidad come to Barbados, we carry to the sea and give you this experience. And the Ghanese, the Ghanese have creeks, but not sea. So we, how you can go under the water and hold your breath longest. And you have to be fit to remain under. And when you're under, you're looking at the other fellas to see who's going up first, because you know you got to stay under if you want to win. Now, staying under Christ, 
presents a challenge. Who, what wants to bring you up when you are standing under Christ? Something called self. So the apostle Paul says what? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That word patience requires staying under Christ. Are you with me? Godliness. So temperance and patience come and patience. Both of those come before godliness. Then brotherly kindness. And then charity, which is the Greek word there, translated charity in King James Version, is agape love. All these are rounds of the ladder. Listen to the next statement. Read it with me. We are saved by climbing round after round, mountain step after step to the height of Christ's ideal for us. That is what the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 4, reaching the measure of the stature of Christ Jesus. Thus he is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay? Keep going now at the top. Page 138. God has called his people to glory and virtue. And they will be manifest in the lives, and there, these will be manifest in the lives of all who are truly connected with him. Truly connected with him. Having become partakers of the heavenly gift, they are to go on to perfection, being kept by the power of God through faith. It is the glory of God to give his virtue to his children. He desires to see men and women reaching the highest standard. And when by faith they lay hold of the power of Christ, when they plead his unfailing promises and claim them as their own, when with an importunity that will not be denied, they seek for the power of the Holy Spirit, they will be made complete in Christ. Praying every day for the Holy Spirit. And when, we not, when we pray for the Holy Spirit, we have to study for the Holy Spirit too. You know, Jesus says, the words I give you, they are spirit and life. So you just don't pray. Pray is very, very important, but you also study for the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in the Word. Early on, latter of the Holy Spirit, let's go. We, read it, we can read all these together. Keep your focus. So if you're reading together, where you should be? In the book. Let's go. Many have in a great measure failed to receive the former rain. They have not obtained all the benefits that God has thus provided for them. They expect that the lack will be supplied by the latter rain. When the richest abundance of grace shall be bestowed, they intend to open their hearts to receive it. They are making a terrible mistake. The work that God has begun in the human heart in giving his light and knowledge must be continually going forward. You see what the earlier rain is? Continuous advancement in the knowledge, intellectually and experientially, of God. That's what we're told in lecture one. Let's continue. Every individual must realize his own necessity. Wait, wait. Listen to this carefully. When we go down there and line up for lunch, okay? Does anybody here tell anybody else to eat for them? You tell them pick up the lunch for you, but you don't tell them to eat for you. So in spiritual matters, who must eat the word of God for you? You. You must eat the word of God in the spiritual food. Let's continue. Every individual must realize his own necessity. That we must hunger and thirst for Christ. Let's continue. The heart must be emptied of every defilement. And cleansed for the indwelling of the spirit. It was by the confession. Is the latter one she's talking about here. It was by confession and forsaken of sin. By earnest prayer and consecration of themselves to God. That the early disciples prepared for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost. Listen now. The same work. Only in greater degree. Must be done now. Then the human agent only had to ask for the blessing. And wait for the Lord to perfect the work concerning him. It is God who began the work. And he will finish his work. Making man complete in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But there must be no neglect of the grace represented by the former reign. Only those. Let's go. Only those who are living up to the light they have will receive greater light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, 
we shall not recognize the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. It may be falling on hearts all around, but we will not discern or receive it. That's serious. We view in Harold March 2, 1897. Function of the latter rain, as we move on, the latter rain fills out the ears and ripens the grains. Let's read again together. At no point in our experience can we dispense with the assistance of that which enables us to make the first star. Wait, listen to me carefully. When a man has built a house, can he say, well, I don't have any need for the foundation now. And to go to the foundation, what will happen? The roof and the sideboards will fall down. The foundation must always be there. It went first, but it must always be there. So at no point in our experience can we dispense with the assistance of that which enables us to make the first start that is the later foundation. Listen carefully now. Still follow. The blessings received under the former reign are needful to us to the end. So you need that foundation to the end. But listen, yet these alone will not suffice. While we cherish the blessing of the early reign, we must not, on the other hand, lose sight of the fact that without the latter rain to fill out the ears and ripen the grain, the harvest will not be ready for the sickle. You get that point? You need the early rain, and it brings you to a certain point. But you cannot reach ceiling without the latter rain. You cannot finish the house without the latter rain. You cannot be ready for the sickle without the latter rain. And the lab labor of the sower will have been in vain. Next sentence. Divine grace is needed at the beginning. You see where we are? Divine grace is needed at the beginning. Divine grace at every step of advance. And divine grace alone can complete the work. There is no place for us to rest in a careless attitude. We must never forget the warnings of Christ. Watch unto prayer. Watch and pray always. Now, can, can you pray always? Even while driving, you can be praying. Whatever you do, you can be praying. Well, my friends will tell you that when I'm driving, especially when I'm going to find distant places, I do more praying than the average person because they say at church I'm a professional rambler. So I have to be preparing for God to show me where to go. But we, we can communicate with God in our thoughts, whatever we are doing. Continuing. A connection with the divine agency every moment is essential to our progress. You heard that? Every moment is essential to our progress. We may have had a measure of the Spirit of God, but by prayer and faith, we are continually to seek more of the Spirit. Everybody listening? Now, when it comes to the word of God and uh, feeding on the word of God, we do a lot of fasting. We should be doing more fasting when it comes to physical eating. But we fast when it comes to the word of God. We don't eat for a lot of times. I'm talking about eating the word of God. But we don't miss meals. Do we miss meals? Tell people about one meal a day or two meals a day, they begin to holler. But they go a whole week without feeding on the word of God and feel comfortable. So there's a formula that says, eat less, exercise more, live longer. Eat more, exercise less, live shorter. And that is also true in the spiritual realm. When we feed on the word of God and exercise by sharing it, we grow spiritually. Okay, now, uh, it will never do, at the bottom of page 139, it will never do to cease our efforts. If we do not progress, listen to this warning, if we do not progress, everybody got that? If we do not progress, everybody see where we are? If we do not progress, if we do not place ourselves in an attitude to receive both the former and latter end, let's read this slowly, we shall lose our souls and the responsibility will lie at the pastor's door at our church members door at our own door 
coming near to the end, top of page 140, quoting from the prophet, uh, prophets of the Old Testament. Which prophet wrote this? Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign. Who wrote that? Hmm? Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign. Who wrote that? Where's that from? Yes, that's the prophet Zechariah, but uh, better. Listen now. Let's go. Do not rest satisfied that in the ordinary course of the season, rain will fall. Ask for it. So we have to pray for the Holy Spirit as well as study the word of God for the Holy Spirit and submit to God constantly. The growth and perfection of the seed rests not with the husbandman. God with that's the gardener. God alone can ripen the harvest, but man's cooperation is required. God's work for us demands the action of our mind. We just had a lecture on that. The action of our mind, the exercise of our faith. We must seek his favors with the whole heart if the showers of grace are to come to us. A preacher said that he was once confronted with a man who told him, you don't have to study the word of God. Jesus will speak to you personally. This is what the man was telling the preacher. The preacher looked at him and said, well, let me tell you something. The Bible tells me, and Jesus tells me, and Paul tells me, study to show your health, yourself approved. He asked the man, tell me how you're going to study the word of God without reading it. You see the spurious things that go around the world. The man says, he's not having to read the word of God. Jesus will tell him what to do. And Jesus says what? Search the scriptures. So that preacher put him in his place earlier, Clark. That's how you get fanaticism. Because the spirit can only guide you through the word to what is truth. Anytime a man doesn't want the word of God and saying the spirit will direct him, you know that as a position out to sea. So let's continue. God's work for us demands the action of our mind, the exercise of our faith. We must seek his favors with the whole heart if the showers of grace are to come upon us. And now the example of Christ's prayer life. Listen to this one. Coming here to the end. The example of Christ's prayer life. Daily, Jesus received a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the early hours of the new day, the Lord awakened him from his slumbers. And his soul and his lips were anointed with grace that he might impart to others. So Jesus got up early in the morning and prayed to his father. All right. Now, if Jesus had to pray for the victory, to give that victory to us, we have to pray to receive it. Remember, watch this one. Let's read this one together. Remember that continual devotion establishes so close a relation between Jesus and his disciples that the Christian becomes like him in mind and character in mind and character. Placing ourselves in the channel of blessing. Let's go. Let's continue going. We don't have long to go. We should improve every opportunity of placing ourselves in the channel of blessing. Christ has said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am I in the midst. Listen to this one now. The convocations of the church as in camp meetings so we're in a camp meeting now, right? The assemblies of the home church and all occasions where there is personal labor for souls are God's appointed opportunities for giving the early and latter rain. So we shouldn't miss camp meetings. We shouldn't miss any meeting that we can attend. If you're going to school and you miss all the classes, which exam you will pass, you want to get set. Top of page 141. Attend, focus, and pray. Now listen to the warning now. But let none think that in attending these gatherings, their duty is done. Some people just come. Just attend. A mere attendance, look on, a mere attendance at all upon all meetings that are held will not in itself bring a blessing to the soul. A mere attendance. 
It is not an immutable law that all who attend general gatherings or local meetings shall receive large supplies from heaven. The circumstances may seem to be favorable for a rich outpouring of the showers of grace, but God himself must command the rain to fall. Therefore, we should not be remiss in supplication. We must pray and study. We are not to trust to the ordinary working of providence. We must pray that God will unseal the fountain of the water of life, and we must ourselves receive the living water. Let us with contrite hearts pray most earnestly that now, in the time of the latter rain, the showers of grace may fall upon us. At every meeting we attend, our prayer should ascend that at this very time, God will impart warmth and moisture to our souls. Praise the Lord. As we seek God for the Holy Spirit, it will work in us meekness, humbleness of mind, a conscious dependence upon God for the perfecting latter rain. If we pray for the blessing and faith, we shall receive it as God has promised. Last section now. Last section. See, the saints tend to get weary fairly quick. Last section. And we read this last section together because it's very sweet. Let's go. Let your heart break for the longing it has for God, for the living God. The life of Christ has shown what humanity can do by being partaker of the divine nature. All that Christ received from God, we too may have, then ask and receive. With the persevering faith of Jacob, what did Jacob tell the angel? I will not let you go until you bless me. So if Jacob had felt that he prayed long enough and told the angel, well, uh, I sleep, you know, I pray long enough, would he get the blessing? With the persevering faith of Jacob, with the unyielding persistence of Elijah, claim for yourself all that God has promised. COL 149, paragraph 2. Over to the last page of the chapter 142. Let's read this one together. Let the glorious conceptions of God possess your mind. That is, we are to daydream and meditate of how good and sweet God is. The glorious conceptions of God. You know, we look around and see the Americans building these large aircraft carriers and all the works of man. And we are enamored by the bright lights of the city. Let the glorious conceptions of God possess your mind. Let your life be knit by hidden links to the life of Jesus. He, let's go. He who commanded the light to shine out of darkness is willing to shine in your heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Where is that text in the Bible taken from? 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse? Okay. I was hearing 3 and 6 and so on, so I was just making sure the text right. Okay. Listen to this part now. The Holy Spirit will take the things of God and show them unto you as you pray and study. Convey them as living power into the obedient heart. Christ will lead you to the threshold of the infinite. Wow. To the threshold of the infinite. You may behold the glory beyond the veil and reveal to men the sufficiency of him who ever liveth to make intercession for us. Hallelujah. That's the end of chapter 14. There's a chapter to go over. After camp is finished, you go home and you're going over the book. There's a chapter to consolidate. Because when camp is finished, you know when you finish learning to drive, you now have to start to learn to drive. Yeah. And when you get your license. So when camp is finished, you now have to start studying. Because you can't study anything once or twice and know it. You have to go over and go over diligently. Uh, okay, what's the time now? We're going to... Yeah, we'll take a break now. We'll pray and take a break before we come back for our last session before lunch. Let us pray.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the morning sessions so far, lecture one and two. We take a break now. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your Holy Spirit to cement in our minds as we pray and study the truths we need to be victorious. Bring us back then for our third session and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.